Welcome to uh, chapter 9 of A Plague Tale Requiem, Composer Walkthrough. I'm Olivier Derivière, the composer, and uh, today we're going through the island, this uh, location where um, everything will happen. And. Uh, why? And now we have Amicia and Hugo being welcomed by the locals and the count and the countess. And basically what we s we've seen in the previous cha chapter is the cult. We have the song where they are singing, like dancing and celebrating. And also the same song, but when they're more like chanting, incanting uh, something, which is the uh, holy child. And the lyrics are so about nice. this. So now we're waking up yes. and... As a reminder as why we hear um, this music that you hear now with the voices. If you remember the very first chapter when Hugo is walking towards the water and get healed, that was the texture, that was the the, the voices like this. So for him is a way of... And she's mentioning the dream. Like my dream. Like my dream, exactly. So that's why the voices to remind not only, you know, Hugo, like he knows, like the feeling, but the, to the players, what's the feeling for him? So there's a sense of surreal here. At start, there was no music. And it felt too grounded. It felt too sort of um, real. And just to add this layer that is the choir doing, um, Perfect chords perfect in arpeggio yes. gives this feeling. So let's move on to the the next <laughs> bit. Look at that. So now you, know you have Sophia. I told you in chapter seven, I think I don't remember that Sophia doesn't have her own theme. Um, number one, we didn't want every character's uh, every character to have a theme, but also. Uh, we didn't want the music to become a little bit goofy in a sense like Mickey Mouse, like, you know, light motif on uh, one character or the other. We have Arno and his own theme, and I think it was way enough. And to have Sophia not having a theme on her own makes her more reliable. Like, she relates life. to the kids more. Observe, and they're, listen, you know, the for those who've played the game, you know, they're going to form the new sort of like jail. triptych. Yes. Like together, they're gonna be together. And worse, he used through Hugo. hell. So we're gonna pass the the cutscene, and now these ambiences that we had on the first chapter on the island, so the previous chapter, is back. And maybe I did mention, but the way we did this was Eric Maria was when we were recording. I told him I need a new sound. I need something that is from nature. I need something, and so he he didn't know exactly what to do, and he's starting, you know, few things, and nothing was, let's say, satisfying for both of us. And at some point, he he, he took his cello like completely differently. Uh, in the upcoming concert, you're gonna see him like the video of the concert, live concert. You're gonna see him. He's taking the cello like in a very different techniques. And this is the notes that you're hearing now on the choir are the notes that was coming out from the cello. Why not? So basically, it, it was completely random, and then I reorganized that for the choir to, to express this. And it gave this sort of uh, natural sounding based on natural harmonics that is capturing the personality of the island. So a breath of silence, get the environment, and then... So it could it can be like this, a little bit ominous, like mystery, what's gonna happen, we don't know, to something that is much more uh, relaxed, uh, like the next bit, I think. Uh, let's see, and then we'll move on. Can we go back to so you see, the there is breath. Yeah? It's very important. To have music all along would be bad, like wallpaper music. Here you can breathe, get a sense of the natural environment, and then... Wait. 
this one is kind kind of positive and that's how the music navigates now it's like different vibes okay so we'll move to the next bit of music the goat he talked about Tremontane. yes <laughs> after wandering about around on, um, on the going. island what? you Tremontane. end up getting closer to the sanctuary which is up the mountain here you still have the um, music for the island the spirit of the island and then what's gonna happen is uh, we're gonna start a new stealth, stealth zone and what is very important is that mainly since you left the continent there is no cello so everything is without cello it's mostly choir based and here because I told you that the new color is the flute as well the stealth fight is with the flute yeah, looks like they really like their privacy here. so that's the flute on the same system if I get close I can hear some percussions we get jailed or worse I have a trick if I go away more flute less percussion you get smoke you get any guard's attention so this music is following the same systems when you're doing music design what's great is like once you get something that is working uh you can dress it the way you want so we could put whatever style of music we want here either i don't know you know big orchestra uh scenes uh chip tunes soloist anything can be working in a sense that if you adapt it in terms of export with the system you know the then everything will work to keep it formal. as the yeah. system is intended to yeah, well. Sophia, oh, no. okay so i'm gonna go fast with this shade, and, I'd like to see and we'll get to the, the next bit of narration well. okay i'm finally uh past the stealth fight man well you know it's a video game so some challenge Feel free to come it's due, even if I'm in narrative, narrative mode. What are we going to do? So we're now reaching this uh, cutscene. And, um, and I'm going to pass it because not much happens. We are now Open dressed. Mind and heart. It is and time to tell now the cult is, never forgotten. is for real. Let's follow them or not. We are now participating into this sort of... Uh, they must recognize us. I don't know. Yes, come on craziness and um, you will hear the cult singing through the corridor here right uh, now wow. Amicia, look up there. the symbol of the order here. this place belonged to them centuries ago a child was born oh, I remember this, this is not the version like of the son. cult the slow version the flame that this is more the score here but i had an issue because it was like you know when you see the countess at the chapter eight you hear this melody you are my child and this whole fantasy that the count is building for his beloved countess is just, um, you know, happening now. And this is for her, for having the child. And it was a good spot for the music to get, you know, a sort of a echoing of this. But if I had to put the music like score, it would feel a little bit disconnected. It would think, are they singing? Is this? So I've put the music in the far back reverb. What? His flame shone over the world. He blessed it with his perfume, his laughter, his joy. Of all places. So it blends. It's almost as if it was in source. It's not supposed to, but it doesn't bother. To uh, thrive. Next, though, um, it's going to be a little bit different. So let's move on. And evil. I'm now about to cross this uh, waterfall, and we will have the cult. In source, singing in the <laughs> what previously they were dancing to Cold. in the village. It's now it's the slow it's version. <laughs> it's it like an incantation. But you did it. I thought I was drowning. 
can hear them oh, coming no. in. You're fine now. No, I'm scared. <gasps> Just walk. I'm with you. It, it reminded me very much of um, Bioshock Infinite. Centuries pass. Famine, war, and plague descend on us. He dreams of fiery war. You are back from the torches, God. Scared. Although I'm not sure it was a reference for them. So that's the in-source music. And we'll move on to the next bit of music. Are you alright? I saw a phoenix on We're now past the, the cult. And we're going to enter the location that will, for Hugo, be the solution. But as we will see, it's not. So, in the dream, remember, we had those voices, and you see the water and the voices. This is unbelievable. So, we're no more into Hugo's head now. The big tree, sort of, the water. The call of the water. This is all in his head, right? It's a fantasy. We know it, but... A child Calming the music. He, he left here. And so we have, like, two dimensions now. We are in Hugo's head, sort of, here, you see. The call. And this child on the fresco. Like in the dream. It's the carrier of the Prima Macula. The Prima Macula. And meanwhile, Amicia and Sophia are discussing Alchemists call it uh, all of corruption. you know what happened in Guyenne and the concept. While Hugo is trying to get healed, He's and of course him. it doesn't work. And you'll see how, for him, realizing that the dream That's is just is a dream and doesn't work the how the music will the cut the when he'll be back him, so i'm sorry i need to, to let go and, uh, rats let me guess death war disease and famine so we're keeping the atmosphere of course we don't let go we don't let go because what's very important anyway, see he's there it's not child of embers. What's very important, come and save the world. basically, is that Amicia is saying what Hugo is realizing. But <laughs> she's saying on a level that is the cult, and Kim, he's realizing this on himself, like his beliefs. So the beliefs of the cult were wrong, that's what Amicia is saying. But his own belief is wrong. Listen. Nothing's changed. That water's not magic. The water? Oh, from the healing pond in your dream. It's like a symbol. Like mother's alchemic joints. You see, so even Amicia, I mean, he's like very disturbed by the fact that it didn't work. And Amicia herself has a, an issue as well. I mean, she knew she she knows it was a dream. She doesn't realize that she's dreaming as well. Basil? Now we're. He was a carrier, just like you. You're not. We have the theme here on the. Why you dreamt of all this? Elia and Basilus, the previous carrier and protector. I mean, look at this place. If there's a cure, it has to be here. Just to lift up, you know, and to give more motivation. But this is Amicia's fantasy now. There is more to this place behind here. She yet don't realize, you know. Let's keep looking. And now we're going through this sort of um, flashback almost to Plague Tale Innocence, because Amicia and Hugo will discover the pl the location where Basilus were being held. And it in. looks very familiar. Paint. You're right. It looks untouched. Too sacred for them, maybe? So, this is the basis of the main melody, right? But here, there won't be the melody. 
here. It's just a guitar. And if you get the storyline, you know what's gonna happen. And this is music, this music is called Brother, but it's just a guitar now. Hey, do you know whose room it is? It is! It's Basilius' room. Just imagine, he was living here, playing here, sitting where you sit. Isn't that Are you missing the melody? It goes like. Yes. Da, and he loved tents, da, just like you. Da, he loved tents. Me too. Da. He had a phoenix. Yes. Maybe he dreamt the same dream as you. Let's see what else he left us. So you can wander around. We'll move on to the next bit of music. Finally, we're here with the Count and the Countess in this um, little water thingy. And we need to escape. So the music is about the Countess and the Count. One thing that we wanted to do is to frame these two characters as lovers. Like, he and she, they're in love of each other. It's real love. And although, I mean, spoiler alert, they're the bad guys. They love each other with a genuine sentiment, you know. Um, it was very important to frame them as, you know, how, as it becomes more... How can they stand in that water? Um, they look so eager to have realistic them. in a sense it's that, you know, the, the Count will lose the Countess later and will became will become mad like crazy so this music is just to illustrate this sort of like love and what drives them out of love your dream showed us another truth but it is a truth we can still use and finally we're going down maybe there would be some synth we're almost there here Analog synth, just in preparation of the reveal for Hugo. Oh, that's pretty so nice. it's very dark. It's very my dream. First gross. Scary, but but the music is not here to be like, ooh, that's spooky and gross and dark. It's more about the realization from Hugo that his dream was not the reality. And the transition to the cutscene and with the Nikel Harpa, the solo, um, will tell here. <coughs> All right. That was no. Spend a full week at sea with my crew changes your notion of stench forever. That was enough for so me. So preparation of. Let's go to that fort. This. Hugo? There was no fort in my dream. Maybe. But your dream put us on the right track. Look at all we've learned. Now we just have to find out the rest. Don't you want to know what happened to that alia? And your ancestor? It's going to be alright. So he's very disappointed. And the music wants to... You know, it, it was about this, the realization of him. Um, so, I'm sorry, I'm a little tired today, so it wasn't, like, super exciting. But I hope you had a good time. And next episode, um, it's Fort, I mean, for me. Which is, like, a little bit uh, more action type. And uh, I hope to see you there. Have a good one. Bye.